To live by 
trust in every step I take. Well, every step I take, it is a step of faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. In every prayer, every prayer I pray is a prayer of faith. Trust in you. Glory to God. You guys are great walkers and marchers. We do everything by faith, right? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Sing, I'm a faith fighter. the truth of God's word I put on his armor I will stand against Can't overcome anything I'm a 
Father God, boys and girls, close your eyes. Raise your hands. We want to take this time to focus on the Lord. He is so good, and he has such a good plan for each and every one of us. With your hands raised and your eyes closed, say, Lord, I know that you have a good plan for my life. Thank you, Father. to the Holy Spirit I yield myself to the unction of God I yield myself to the Holy Spirit I will let Him be my God Sing I yield myself I yield myself to the Holy Spirit, I yield myself to the unction of God. I yield myself to the Holy Spirit. I will let Him be my God. Sing, I yield myself. I yield myself. your hands raised. Thank you, Lord. He has made us so precious. He has made us so good. We are exactly what he says we are in his word. Thank you. voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Thank you, Jesus. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. i 
focused on things that we do or who our friends are or the activities we're involved with but the things that really matter the things that we put our identity in should be the Lord and that's it because other things might change but God always stays consistent And he says so many good things about us. I want to believe those things. Guys, say, I want to believe. Everybody say, I want to believe. I want to believe. 
the things that God says about me. The things that God says about me. Glory to God. Well, you boys and girls, enjoy your class, enjoy the lesson, and we'll see you next time. And the word of the day is real. God is real, and real faith in Him gets results. Hey guys, it's offering time. I've got my offering right here. So I'm ready to give it to God. All I need is God's address. Does anybody know what street God lives on? No? You know why? Because God doesn't have a physical address like you have on your house. If we want to give our offering to God, we don't put it in an envelope and then put it to the post office and think that it's going to go straight up to heaven. That's not how that works. We give where God tells us to give. And God is leading me to give my offering to the church today. But sometime he might lead you to give to a friend or to give to a different ministry. But the most important thing is to be led and to go and put it where God tells you to. So, I have a verse in Hebrews. So go ahead and get your Bibles. We're going to read it together, okay? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8. Are you ready? It says, Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. So when we give our tithes and offerings to God, we don't put it in an envelope to send to heaven. We put it where he tells us to, and we sow it where he tells us to. So now we're going to do our offering confessions. Are you ready? Okay, what's happening in Faith Life Church? We're getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, and our equipment. And you know what's next? All of our debts are being reduced and eliminated. And the last one, God is bringing into our hands seed, even some great big whopper chunk seeds. And when we do get those whopper chunk seeds, we sow them where he tells us to, right? That's right. Hi, boys and girls. It's time to read our scripture of the day. Okay, so get your Bibles out. I got mine right here. Okay, so we're going to turn to Romans 3, 3 through 4. So I'm so excited to read it. You got it? Okay, so it says, For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. So boys and girls, isn't that just amazing? It just shows us how powerful the faithfulness of God is, that even if there's some that do not believe, it does not affect and it does not change his love and faithfulness to us. Here we go. So don't you just love the word of God? It's so amazing and so important to read it all the time and every day. So remember, boys and girls, Faith Life Kids read their chapter every day, Monday through Friday. It is confession time, and I am so excited to be here to do confessions with you. So why don't you hop on up and get ready. Will you repeat after me and say this? Say, I'm quick, I'm sharp, I'm bright, and good looking, very rich, and a major blessing. Boys and girls, you are. Now let's do this one, are you ready? All right, I want you to say with me, I'm a doer, I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the word of God. I know you are. All right, boys and girls, now we're gonna say this confession. Repeat after me, I want you to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Awesome job. Now, we've been talking about the Bible, so I hope you have your Bibles. All right, I want you to take your Bible and I want you to hold it. And say this after me. I want you to say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. 
I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can be what God says I can be. Boys and girls, those are all truths that you can speak all throughout your week. What you doing? Hey, Jimmy. Oh, you know, I hey. am just so, so excited. <laughs> you look excited. Hey, boys I and girls, how we doing? <laughs> I am excited because guess what? Um, uh, 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 you got a new lipstick. Huh, <laughs> you noticed. <laughs> no, actually, I'm excited right at this second because I am going on vacation. Hey, that is exciting. Yes, Even for like, a, you so know, like excited. a normal person. So, hey, <laughs> I mean, I would go on vacation sometimes. <laughs> Just last month, I was I was down in New Orleans. We had oh. some good food. We had a good time. Yeah. Well, so uh, where are you going? Oh well, um, I'm not exactly sure yet. But I was thinking something like the beach, you know. But I don't really know. You don't know where you're going. going? No, I don't know yet. But I've got all my things ready. See, right. I've got sunscreen uh -huh. and these cute pink sunglasses. All I've got right. a beach ball, yeah. and I've got these snorkel so that I can look at all the fishies through the water and I have this noodle so that I can float and all these things so I am just I'm ready <laughs> so you're just gonna get in the car and drive till you hit water somewhere <laughs> you know well, where you're going I, I don't exactly know that either but wait well, you don't know how you'll get in there either well, no, but I've been using my faith. You see, I, I learned about how we're supposed to make good confessions. So, mm -hmm. I've been making confessions. So you uh -huh. want to know what my confession is? Sure. Okay, yeah. so this is my confession. I am going on vacation. I am going on vacation. See? Okay, so one of my friends, she made good confessions about her vacation, sure, sure, and then yeah. she got to go with her family on their vacation, and it well, was so normal. awesome. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing, because I have faith, and I'm making confessions. So you, you asked the Lord uh, about going on vacation, and uh, he well, got a word, and a scripture to stand on. And... Well, no, I... No? I didn't know I needed to do that, but that's okay, oh, because it. look, I have all this money! Oh, that's, that's... Wait a minute. See? Let me see that. Let me see that one. Let me see, that. see? Okay, so I bought this money at a toy store. It only cost me $5. And look how much money they gave me back. <laughs> so now I can pay for any vacation that I want. Cammy. Cammy. This 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 is uh, this ain't real money, Cammy. This uh, is counterfeit. What? Well, well, what's counterfeit? Counterfeit? That means it ain't real. This uh, this money, this is just pretending to be money. It's like somebody looked at some money and then they tried to make something kind of look like, just like it. But, but this ain't the real thing. Real money is it's based on something. But this right here, this is this is this is useless, Cammy. Uh, this isn't real money. No, it's oh, just but, pretend. Well, and well, you know what that makes me th think of? What? You know, just like you can have counterfeit money. You can have counterfeit faith. Counterfeit faith? Yeah. Like if instead of basing your faith on something, basing it on the word of God, basing it on what you hear in your heart to believe for, paying attention to your spirit for the timing and the right, the right choices to make and right steps to take, instead of basing it on something real, you can base your faith just on any old idea. Or you can base it on trying to do what somebody else can do. You know you know what I'm saying here? Um, well, um, that, that sounds like what I was doing. <laughs> it sounds a lot like what you were doing. Well, I don't want to have fake or counterfeit faith. No, you do so, not. Because but, you know something about fake faith? What? It's a lot like fake money. If you take this here money to the store and you say, hey, let me buy some, uh, I don't know, some lemons or something. You say, hey, give me some of that. They'll be like, that ain't real money and we ain't taking it. Uh, well, does this mean I can't go on my vacation now? <laughs> no, 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 Cammy, that's not what that means. That just means that real, real faith is what you need. Just like you need real money to buy some lemons or any other citrus. Uh, just like you need real money to do that. You need real faith to take a step of faith like what you're trying to do. So what you need to do, Cammie, is you need to pray. You need to ask God about 
some wisdom, ask for some wisdom about what you should do to take your vacation. Because God loves you. God wants you to be able to take a vacation. But maybe he's got a time and a place that'd be better than any time and place you could come up with, right? Okay. And when he gives you the time and the place, when he ministers to your spirit, to your heart, the perfect thing to do, that's when you can have faith. That's when you can believe that he is going to provide because he doesn't just provide for any old idea that we come up off the top of our head. He can't do that. He can only provide for his plan. Okay, so if I want to go on a vacation, what you're saying is I need to read my Bible and spend some time praying and ask the Lord where I should go and when I should go and what I should do and then he'll show me and then that will be real and that's what I can stand on and confess, right? Yeah, that right there, that's the right way to do it. <sighs> well, I want to do it the right way. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I want to have real faith and then the Lord can bless me with the right vacation. That's right. And boys and girls, we, real faith is what we want. We don't want to settle for any of that phony faith, that fake faith trying to imitate what we see others doing. No, no, no. Don't settle for anything less than the real thing. You check your heart. You believe on based on something, based on what God has ministered to you. And that is where you get some results. <laughs> Let me hear you say amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, boys and girls. This is Jimmy Jazz Hands and Cammy. <laughs> we'll be seeing you. not understand. Oh, hey, doer. What are you doing? Hello. I am distraught. Okay, well, how, how come? What happened? Well, you know Chicky Chick? Mm-hmm. My chicken? Yeah. His name is Chicky Chick. Yeah, she's so cute and fluffy. She is a very cute chicken. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got a chicken because I wanted my livestock to be blessed like it says in the word. Right. So, uh, you know Chicky Chick? Yeah. Cute, fluffy little chicken. I do not think she is feeling very well. well she's not. Well, wh what happened? I mean, did you see her today and she was looking sad? She, she, ah, uh, it, it started a couple days ago, actually. Oh, really? Yes, I went in to see her in her chicken coop and, and, and she was just kind of in the corner like this. That seems no good. Was she taking a nap or... She, just... she was not taking a nap. No. I went up and I said, Chicky Chick, Chicky Chick, it's time to wake up. Uh -huh. And I think, I think she has the chicken sniffles. Oh, no. Very... I don't like the human sniffles. No. I can't imagine the chicken sniffles are very fun either. She seems like she has a little upset chicken stomach. So, of course, what I did immediately was I went to Otis. And I said, Otis, we need to pray in faith that Chicky Chick will feel better. Well, good. I'm so glad that is the right thing to do. Pray over her. So, we got together and we prayed. Uh-huh. And she still, she, she did not get better. Oh, okay. Well, when you prayed... Did you hear the Lord tell you to do something, or the Holy Spirit prompt you, or you had a thought, of maybe something that you should do? Well, I, I mean, when we were praying, I looked up and I saw, and I was like, hmm, Chicky Chick's little house is, is, is not as clean as it maybe should be. And, uh, right. <laughs> it's been a little while since we changed her water out. And, um, okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's probably something that I should do. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Chicky Chick is not feeling good at all, yeah. and I do not understand. Right, so then you went and cleaned out the house? Well, well, no, no. I I, I looked at the house and I said, hmm, I should clean that. And, and, then, and then I, um, mm, it, uh, and we prayed, and she should feel better. Okay, so you, so you didn't clean out the house. So what did you go do? Well, I had an appointment at 2 o'clock. There is this squirrel in the backyard who is very disrespectful to our property rights. And so okay. I always go out and I yell at this squirrel and I tell him, you are a very bad squirrel. Okay. It is important. Okay, well then what happened the next day? Is that when you cleaned it out and got her some fresh water? The next day I went and I looked and she looked even sadder instead of like this. Oh, she looked man. like this. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> that is no good. I mean, that seems like she's doing much worse then. She does not seem happy at all. Well, I, I can kind of imagine like, since... normally she is all... House is dirty. Bok, 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 bok. Uh huh? But yesterday she was like... Bok, 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 bok. Oh. 
Okay, so so then after she did that, did you say, okay, chicky chick, it's time to get your house clean. Let's get you some fresh water and someone and should care. really do that. But um, I really was more 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 concerned about about her not feeling very well. Uh huh. Right. So, so, so we then, need her get her feeling better. Uh huh. So then you didn't clean out her house. What? Well, well, no, I, I did not do that yet. Um. Do it. I mean, don't you think it's important to do the things that the Lord has told you to do? The Lord had told me to? Well, I mean, it, it's important. You need to clean your chicken's house. That's, um, but when we were praying, I was, I was thinking, well, we need her to get better. We need a, a miracle. Uh-huh. So, let's have a miracle. Hmm. Okay, but... Still waiting. I, I think maybe I should read you the scripture in the Word of God. <gasps> do you have scripture in the Word of God? Uh, Is yeah, it about I do. Miraculous chicken recovery? Uh, no, not quite. Uh, well, I... In Matthew seven twenty four, it says, "Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock." And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who has built his house on the sand. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it fell, and it was a great fall. So, you see... So, what you're saying is mm -hmm. that if there was a rainstorm, the house would be way cleaner and she would have fresh water. No, that is... No. You, no. Okay, here, let me explain it. So, you prayed. I did, yes. And, and you thought you were in faith, right? Well, I thought I was... Yeah. Well, well, of course I was in faith. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Right, except right after you prayed, the Lord told you to do something. And because you didn't listen, and didn't do it, it was fake faith. <laughs> Real faith is a doer of the word of God. So when God says something, that's his word, right? Wait, so you say that when the Lord said, you need to clean out the house and uh, get the water. That, mm -hmm. And I said, I just want her to be healed in a miracle that that was Fake. Fake. Faith. Faith. Yeah. <sighs> I know. Bad. It bad. is bad. bad. That's bad. So, when you heard something from the Lord, then if you were to do it right away, do what He said, His Word of God, then you would have been in real faith. So, I think. I think I should go do it right away. I think you should too. I think we need to clean out that chicken coop. Yes. I think you should go do it and help Chicky Chick get all better. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Hi, boys and girls. Let's go ahead and get back to our memory verse and do, uh, do some digging in here. So I'm going to read to you Romans 3, 3 through 4, and this is in the King James Version. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid! Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. As it is written, thou that mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Hmm. Some of those things I'm not real sure about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go look at some other versions and see if it'll help me understand what this verse is telling me. So one of the things when I was reading, it said, will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Well, what does that mean? So I'm gonna look at the easy to read version. And the easy to read version, it says, but will that stop God from doing what he promised? No, God's promises are true. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says, if some of them were unfaithful, so what? Does their faithfulness cancel out God's faithfulness? No way. Hmm. Well, back in the King James version of this verse, it says, does it make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Well, what does God forbid mean? Hmm. 
Let's look at the New King James Version, and for God forbid, they replaced it with certainly not. Hmm, I like that. Let's see. Oh, I like this one too in the message. For God forbid, it says, not on your life. So what that means is it says, I'm going to go back to the King James Version, the original version. It says, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Well, certainly not. That's what I'm reading right here. It does not affect God's faithfulness. So what I'm getting is no matter what we choose to believe, God's word is true and he is faithful and he will do what he promised. All right. So if I choose not to believe, does that make God's promises not true? That's right. Certainly not. You do it with me. Okay. We're going to read the verse and I want you to do that. Certainly not when we get there. Okay. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? All right, get ready. Say it with me. Certainly not. That is right. Even if everyone else is a liar, God will always do what he says. As the scripture says about him, you will be proved right in what you say, and you will win when people accuse you. That's the easy to read version. So boys and girls, God is very real and real faith in him and in his promises produces real results. Hey, boys and girls. Wow, today has been so much fun learning about real faith. We don't want fake faith, we want real faith. And so I have a scripture I wanted to read to you today and it is found in the New Testament in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse four. Do you have your Bibles? Awesome, all right, get him out. Let's turn to 1 Timothy together, chapter one, verse four, and let's see what it says. Oh, it's a good one. It says, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned. And that is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. And boys and girls, there were a lot of words in there that might be new to you. Did you hear the word unfeigned? You might have. Boys and girls, that means real. We want real, true faith, and that pleases God. But how are we learning how to get true faith or real faith? by reading God's word. And we wanna be experts about what God says in his word so that if anything comes up and when we're out and we're like, is that real or is that God? Is that real faith? Boys and girls, we wanna know in God's word what he says and be able to recognize what is fake and what is real because we want real, right? Right. All right, well, I have a really fun game today and we are gonna practice. You wanna practice? Seeing what is real and what is fake. Now, another word for fake is phony. So this is called the real or phony game. So I have some fun pictures here. Let me put my Bible down. I have some fun pictures here I wanted to show you today. I want you to tell me, do you think that this picture is real or do you think that this picture is phony? You ready? Here we go. Da -da -la. Can you see that picture? Have you ever seen a guinea pig lion at the zoo or in Africa? No! Boys and girls, that was a pretty easy one. Is it real or is it phony? It's phony! We don't need that one. That one's phony. All right, let me see if you know what this one is. Huh, I have another one here. All right, can you spot this animal? Do you think that this animal is real or do you think that this animal is Phony. What are you saying? Are you saying real? You guys are super smart. Yes, this is a real animal. Look at this guy. I've never really seen one of these, but it sure is real. God made it. Awesome. Okay, 
guys are getting good at this. All right, let's check out another picture here. Do you think that this one is real or phony? Whoop. Hmm. Have you ever seen a dog bird? No, me either. You're all yelling at Miss Megan saying, it's phony. It's phony. You're right. That one's phony. That's made up. It's not real. But what about this one? Have you ever seen one of these? Yes. Are you all yelling real at Miss Megan? You're right. This is a real animal. This is called a narwhal. God made a narwhal. It's real. Looks a little different but that doesn't make it not real. It's real. Awesome, good job, you guys. All right, I got one more. You guys are getting really good at this. Last one. What is this? A giraffe tortoise? Hmm. No, that's so silly. It's kind of cute, but it's super silly. Even as cute as that is, we know that this is phony. God did not make an animal like this. Well, boys and girls, now this is just a fun, silly game of just animals, but our faith is real, and God wants us to have real faith that is based on His Word. And the way that we know that our faith is real is by spending time in God's Word. We're not making up faith based on what we see or what other people do. We base our faith on God's Word and what He says in it, and that is real and we want to go around being a light with our real faith trusting and following God and it will be good all right boys and girls I am so excited that we got to play a game together I hope you had fun hey guys I have a very very important question for you and that question is, do you like lemonade? I really like lemonade. I do too, and you know why? It's because my mom made the best lemonade ever. Really? She had the best recipe, my family loved it, everyone on the block loved it. Mm -hmm. It's the best recipe in the world, I'm telling you. So, I am gonna make it for you today, because I watched her do it 100,000 times, and I think if I just copy what she did, mm -hmm. it'll be the best lemonade you've ever had. Oh, I'm excited to yes. try it. So I'm gonna get some of this white stuff, because she always had this white stuff here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add some water here to make sure the white stuff gets all dissolved. Yeah. More water. Stir it all together. And then she always added real lemons. Gotta have real mm -hmm. genuine lemon juice. Mix it up again. And you can have it cold, you mm -hmm. can have it warm temperature. Mm -hmm. It's all good because it's the best lemonade in the mm, world. Thank you. That's salty. Salty? Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be salty. Did you put sugar in it? Uh, no, I just, I saw my mom always putting this, you know, white stuff in, so I just grabbed some white stuff and put it in. It doesn't taste sweet. Oh, no, it doesn't. Well, it's supposed to taste sweet. I guess that's something that we can learn from this is that yeah. just like I tried to copy my mom's recipe and it didn't work really mm -hmm. good, maybe I need to go find the real recipe. Mm -hmm. And then kind of that way we need to find out from God what yeah. he wants us to do. And so we can have real faith instead of copying what we see other people doing. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, that reminds me of the verse John 4:42. Okay. Can I read it for you really yes, quick? Yes, please. You guys can go get your Bibles too and you can join us in reading at John 4:42. Here it is. It says, Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So just like we were talking about, these people knew who Jesus was because they found out for themselves. They didn't just wait for someone to tell them. They didn't just believe something else somebody said. They went and found out for themselves. So I am mm -hmm. going to find Mom's recipe. And we're going to make okay. this lemonade right. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Um, yep, yep, you're right. It says sugar. It Aww. totally says sugar. Mm -hmm. So I happen to have some more freshly squeezed lemonade. Oh, good. So we're going to try this again. And this time, we're going to add the real deal, the sugar. The sugar. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. Lots of sugar because we want it really sweet. Add some more water. Sit up real good. And 
This time we have the real ingredients, so it should mm -hmm. taste real good. Thank you. Mm, much better. Awesome much sauce. Much better. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Did you see? 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 Do her! I saw Chicky Chick! Chicky Chick! She looks like she's doing so much better! She looks so much happier. Her little chicky eyes are brighter. And she doesn't say, she says, in like a happy way. And she looks so much better. Yes! She's happy! Yes! I am so glad that you decided to be a doer of the Word of God. Right? I am a doer of the word of God. Yeah, it's your <laughs> favorite doer, thing. I do very much like to be a doer of the word of God. It's very, very, very nice. So good. <laughs> well, I am just so glad that when you heard and you got correction on what to do, that you did it right away. And boys and girls, I want to encourage you that when something comes up, that you pray about it and you stand on the word of God and then you listen to the Holy Spirit, to God, and to those promptings, sometimes it's a thought of, oh, I should do this. And then you should do it right away. And that is being a doer of the word of God, right? And having real faith. Right, real faith is being a doer. It's being obedient. Right, to those things that the Lord has told you. And you can't have real faith without being obedient. Mm -mm. You can't disobey and be in faith. Right, and sometimes the things that he tells you are to do something or to stop doing something, but whatever he tells you, even though it might not think or might not be what you think it is, you just have to do it right away and trust him that when you're a doer of his word, that he takes care of you, right? Right. And Chicky Chick. And Chicky Chick. Um, kind of thinking maybe we should go play with Chicky Chick and get her spirits up? Yes. She is happy and in the mood. Oh, that sounds great. chicks are. And yes, you're thinking, you're feeding your paper chicks, Miss Megan. Well, I'm feeding them paper because paper chicks might eat paper. Look how fun. Did you guys enjoy that story of Dewar the dog? Remember how he was believing for his chicky chick to get better? And remember how he heard from God and God said, Dewar, you need to change out the water every day. And Dewar learned that when you hear from God, we need to obey God. Real faith hears from God, and real faith obeys God. So today for craft, I thought it would be so much fun to make a little chicky chick. And every time you see your chicky chick, you can remember that you can hear from God and that you can be a doer of God's word because that is what real faith is. And boys and girls, we want to have real faith in God. All right, would you like to know how to make this chicky chick? Okay, let me show you. It is so much fun. Now, as always, boys and girls, I have yellow paper. Well, I don't always have yellow paper, but I'm saying I have colored paper, and you do not have to have colored paper. You can use regular paper and color it in. You might even have a pretend blue chick. Why not? Or you could have a pretend pink chick. You can make it whatever color you want to make it. Your chicky chick can be whatever color. Well, boys and girls, you're going to want to get a piece of paper, any color you want, and you're going to draw two circles on that paper. Now. I'm not awesome at drawing circles perfectly, so I used a cup, and I used a big cup and a little cup, and I drew these two circles so that they would be very good circles. All right, so once you get your circles on there, you're gonna cut them out. We're gonna cut out this little circle. Now, boys and girls, when we hear from God, do we hear him with our ears? Do you hear it in your ears? 
No, when God speaks to us, boys and girls, He speaks to us in our spirit. We hear it inside, in our heart. And we want to know God's word. We want to spend time with God. And when we do that, we will recognize His voice so that when He is talking to us, we will hear it and we will be doers of God's word. It is so good. God would never tell you anything that wouldn't be good because God is good. Just like God wants to take care of those chicky chicks, doesn't he? He wanted to take care of doer too. Everything that God does is in love and it is good. So if you hear it in your spirit and it is love, it is God. All right, so look here what I have. I have two circles. How are we gonna turn this into a chicky chick? Let me show you. You're gonna take your circle and you're just gonna fold it in half. Easy peasy. Looky here. Now look, we're on our way. I'm gonna move this little chicky here. And he's gonna be the cutest little chick, but he's gonna need a face. So let's put this other little circle. You see where we're going? And we're gonna glue this right here. You may tape it as well. Miss Megan brought some glue today. We always use tape and I thought, you know, we might as well use some glue today. All right, so here, look here. We're gonna put his little face on. How fun. Wouldn't that be really fun if I had real chicks all over this table? I don't even know if I could craft. You know, they might even eat my craft if I had real chicks on this table. Have you guys ever held a real chick? They are so soft and so cute. All right, so now we need a little eye for our chick. Now let me show you how to draw an eye. Let's see, I'll move my chickies. Here you go, guys, move over here. There you go. We're gonna draw a circle, and I'm gonna do it, and then I will show you. I drew a circle, just like this. Then, we're gonna draw a half circle in the middle. Look, just like that, easy. Then you're gonna color in the front part. Ah, <gasps> there is your eye. I told you, it's pretty easy, but he's gonna need a beak now. Mm, don't you worry, it is easy to make. Watch this. If you know how to make the letter M, you know how to make a beak. Let me show you. So I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna use this orange and I'm gonna draw the letter M. That's it, the letter M, that's easy. Now we're gonna cut it out. And we're gonna glue it on because my chick wants to be able to eat chicky food. Here we go. Isn't it fun to talk about what's real? Faith, boys and girls, we want to have real faith. We don't want to copy somebody else's faith. We want to have real faith in our own lives and we want to follow God's plan for us. And that is good. All right, here we go, look. I have a chicky, chicky mouth. We're gonna glue this on. A little bit of glue or tape. You can always use tape. And then we're going to stick it right here. <gasps> he is coming along, or she. Could be a she, but she's gonna need a little wing here. Do you remember a while back, Miss Megan showed you how to draw a heart? We're gonna draw another heart, any size that you would like, and we're gonna cut it out, and that will be our wing. Oh, boys and girls. Knowing God is so good and knowing what he has for us and that we can always trust him. Whenever we have a question about something that is happening or we need help with something, God will always help us and he will always speak to us and tell us what we need to know. We just have to listen. All right, let's put our little wing on. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna put my little wing right here and you can put a couple wings on if you want. These little chicks just have one wing today. And that is my little chicky chick. Come here, chicky chick. You're gonna join his friends. Look, they're gonna eat the chicky, chicky food paper. All right, boys and girls, I hope that you have a great time making your chicky chick and remembering that you have real faith in God and he will speak to you and you can be a doer of what he is asking you to do. Hello, boys and girls. I have a wonderful opportunity for you today. I would like to share with you how you can have a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. And Jesus will come in with you, come into your heart, and he will help you and guide you and give you all the things that you need to be successful. 
So boys and girls, if you would, I'd like for you to bow your heads and repeat after me as we say this prayer. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross and that he paid the full price for all my sins. I believe that you've raised him from the dead and that he's alive right now. Jesus, you are my Lord. Thank you for saving me. I am yours and you are mine. All right, let's just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Give him the praise and the glory. And you, right now, you've been redeemed because you've said that. And if you believed in your heart, you are saved. That's exciting, boys and girls. Boys and girls, have you been looking for the word of the day? How many times did you see it? Good job, you're right. You have the mind of Christ and you're quick, sharp, and bright. Good job, so come see us next time.